Hi everybody, welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Paul Reed and I'm a professional photographer. So, you love monochrome photography. Maybe you're considering picking up a monochrome sensor camera. Or maybe you're considering that you're gonna be shooting black and white film. Or maybe you're already doing that and you're just appreciating all those lovely tones and shadows and texture. One thing's for sure, if you are a lover of monochrome photography, you're actually in a niche. Not everybody loves monochrome photography, but it's monochrome photography really that speaks to my heart. And if you're watching this channel, then I'm sure it speaks to yours as well. There's an emotional connection that we get through monochrome photography that just can't be achieved with colour. We feel so emotionally connected to the subject in a monochrome photograph. With colour photography, sometimes we can be distracted by, well, by the colours and not really get to the soul of the actual subject itself. When I first purchased the Leica Q2 monochrome, I was just in awe of all of those shadows and tones and just how beautiful everything was. It was just like seeing the world with new eyes at the time. And I went out every day taking photographs just around my local area and it just took on a whole new life to me, my just small city. And I wasn't bothered if there was people in those images. I wasn't bothered about any of that. I was just looking simply at the light and the tones and the texture of everything and then composing the shots and then taking them. I wasn't out just during the day shooting. I was out at night as well. And just everything just had a magic to me at that time. I couldn't care less at that point whether people liked my photographs or not. I just was out there shooting from the heart and we mustn't lose that as photographers. We must always shoot what we see, what we want to show other people so that, because those images will find their audience. Not everything has to be such a striking image to stop somebody scrolling through Instagram instantly. Art was never meant to be viewed like that. Art was always something that you would go to an exhibition to see or a gallery and you would take time to look at art that was printed on a wall. We're so lucky these days to have things like Instagram and Vero and things like that to enable us to show our photographs to the world without even leaving our houses. We don't even need to pay a penny to have images in front of such a wide audience. Of course, along with that privilege, we have all the problems. And I will just take Instagram as an example for this because Instagram is kind of a, an app or site or whatever you want to call it that we photographers kind of love to hate. That is getting our images out to a wide audience. It's not just going out to photographers, it's going out to lots and lots and lots of people who maybe just aren't even interested in photography. Instagram isn't really a community anymore. You better go into something like Vero if that's what you want. If you're wanting, and I would advise that you do do that, but just keep in mind that if you're on things like Vero, it's really gonna be just mainly other photographers that you are showing your work to. And look, Vero is fantastic as well for looking at other people's images and just taking inspiration from that. But Vero is very much a community, I feel, where you will comment on other people's photos, they'll comment on yours, you'll have discussions with each other, that sort of thing. Whereas Instagram, it really isn't like that anymore. Maybe you're disheartened at the moment with Instagram that you'll put a photograph on there and it just doesn't get, it doesn't feel as if it's getting seen or it just doesn't receive many likes from anybody. And you know, yeah, that, that can make you feel as if, well, maybe this photograph isn't very good. That's probably not the case. The issue is not that your photographs aren't good enough for people to like them. It's just that it hasn't grabbed people by the throat and said, look at me. 
and those images are few and far between most of my photographs are very much images that are there to be looked at for a longer amount of time than just kind of a quick scroll what people tend to do like I say on Instagram is they'll scroll through maybe see something and quickly scroll back to it They're so busy just you know scrolling through like this I've got something which I say to people who I mentor all the time and it's this pop hits versus album tracks and what you really need to be doing is releasing some pop hits so those images that really grab people that are catchy that they just you know they just want to look at straight away you need to be putting images out like that in order for people to listen to the album tracks are we still talking about photography what then happens is people are then invested in you where they'll look at your other photographs and then they will spend time with those images and they will see how good those other photographs are but in order to be seen you really need to be putting some images out there that are really going to be striking and that people are going to you know scroll back to obviously this isn't the case if you were doing an exhibition people have you know traveled there to that exhibition they're going to be looking at your images for a longer amount of time and they're going to appreciate all those great things about those images printing your images should always be the priority that should be the goal that you aim towards is printing your photographs so that at some point you can do a little exhibition somewhere that you can show people those images physically I always feel as if you should just have an aim a goal for something like just say 10 images printed a body of work that you're going to be able to show people show people physically I know I've just plucked 10 images out of the air there but it's just an example really make it five photographs printed but print something anyone that regularly watches this channel already knows that I favor platinum palladium printing over most processes second to that silver gelatin prints would be next to that as my favorite type of printing now platinum palladium prints they will basically last for generations and that's one of the reasons why I choose platinum palladium printing I use a gentleman called Roberto from RJ Print Lab to do all my printing and I'll leave a link in the description for that platinum palladium printing is really it's like leaving a legacy behind because those prints are something that nobody's going to throw out they look too special to throw out so sounds really morbid when I'm not on this earth anymore and those platinum palladium prints remain I would hope that they go to a good home somewhere or get sold somewhere I want art that's gonna last I went away to Scotland for the weekend I had a lovely breakaway and you know some of these smaller little towns in Scotland there isn't lots and lots going on there so it's not really somewhere where you would consider right I'm gonna go there and do street photography however there's other even more beautiful things there to admire and capture and yeah some of those images aren't gonna grab people by the throat on Instagram and say look at me but there's a beauty to some mundane things that you know seem mundane anyway but there's such beautiful things to take photographs of that it would be completely wrong to not take photographs of those things just because you think oh well that's not going to get many likes or something like that you really need to be photographing from the heart at all times these were the images that I took last weekend
I hope you enjoyed those images. I've got um, still got two places left on the London Photo Walk, that workshop, on the 9th of November. I'm going to London to do that photo walk and I've still got a couple of spaces left on that. So if you'd like to come along then get in touch with me. I would absolutely love for somebody from the YouTube community to come along. I'd love to meet you. Also, if you would like me to mentor you, then I do a mentorship program. I do that in either four months or eight months. I do it all online over Zoom and a lot of people are really benefiting from that. So that's something else which I offer. Don't forget to like and subscribe and all of that sort of stuff. I'll see you next time.